Hello, I'm Larry Price, and I'm the English translator of Summer Yazbek's extraordinary novel, Planet of Clay. Now, I loved working on this book. Uh, that may come as a surprise because it is set in a cellar and most of the translation was completed under lockdown, uh, which doesn't necessarily always lend itself to um, a pleasant experience. But uh, I think anyone reading this book will really appreciate the fact that um, the narrator is just an absolute joy uh, to spend time with. She has uh, a very unique and refreshing take on the world. Um, she brings this innocence to everything that she does and she sees. And I don't mean that in a sentimental way. She just has this absolute clarity of vision. She doesn't bring judgment or any baggage. She simply uh, brings an open mind and uh, a very powerful imagination. And the result is uh, one of the most moving and uh, uplifting uh, pieces of literature that I've ever had the pleasure of working on. Um, so I really hope you enjoy this uh, this tiny slice of her very special voice. Um, just to give you some context about the excerpt, um, Rima has been caught up in uh, a gas attack. Um, there have been chemical weapons used and she is currently in a field hospital um, being treated and um, she has woken up in a pool of water um, and she is sort of wavering on the edge of life and death. And these are her musings on that topic. What I wanted to tell you about was death and about the paradox that I'm still trying to understand of those moments when I was limp with the horrible smell still in my nose and I was swimming in the water with a group of dead women and they were gathered all around me and they smelled odd as well. But that moment of limpness after one of the men stood up to cover my face and hair because they thought I was dead and fingers ended up on my stomach, the fingers of the dead woman I told you about. That moment the one that I'm trying to explain now, while recalling everything I've ever read about dying in books, was nothing like any moment I had ever read about. And I hadn't imagined I'd be able to feel it, because I know there are gaps in my mind. Gaps put there by the will of God the mysterious, as my mother used to say. I had a plan a long time ago. It was this. To write and illustrate a long novel. It's a shame to write it with no colours or pictures. I think the right moment for turning these words into drawings is coming. Inside every event is motion, so I say to myself. It's not necessary for an event to be inside a square frame. I used to think we could arrange the colours in paintings so they would become part of one larger canvas that continued over every page, and the black, sharp-cornered lines of the words would disappear, and colours would settle in their place. I don't know why I'm going back over these things now when I'm writing about waiting for Hassan and explaining to you about the moments when I died for the fourth time and then lived again. Perhaps it was the water. Yes, the water was the real reason that pushed me to it. The water that the corpses are floating in. They weren't really floating, but I felt like they were. They were still spraying water on most of the bodies and I was dying and falling into a delicious limpness. I wasn't thinking of anything. That's what I wanted to tell you. I knew that I was dying. Everyone around me was dying. I saw several children go limp and close their eyes. And there was a man shouting at his son while spraying him with water. Baba, don't go to sleep. And I saw the boy close his eyes and sleep. I saw them all do this. They were trying to wake a group of lumps, limp and swinging in the water. The strange lumps seemed like watercolours, they were the bodies of men and women and children. And other lumps a short distance away were people who were shouting and shaking their heads or their hands or their arms. These last ones I didn't look at, but I could hear their voices. During those moments, I couldn't look at anything. There was only the ceiling. For moments, perhaps minutes, I was falling into a wonderful sleep. It shouldn't mean anything other than the quiet I dreamed of. I knew I was dying. And I wasn't angry or afraid. I was pleased. At the ceiling above me was the sky, and there was a white fan hanging from the ceiling, not moving. Perhaps the electricity was cut off. 
and on the ceiling was tattered paint. I could see all of this, despite the twilight in my eyes, but it was turning to clouds, and I wasn't thinking of anything. And everything I'd read about the moments before dying and moving to the other world hadn't been true, because I felt a pleasant surrender, and I wasn't thinking of what was happening around me, or even the reason for my being there. Even the question that used to make me spin round on myself was missing, and that question was, has the world always been this way? Is this what it's really like? I didn't know, because I've always been tied in my room. Does that other world in the middle of Damascus really exist? Our lane and our house? Is that world still standing? Has it disappeared and turned into a world of stories and pictures? How do people live there and go on like normal? Well, what's happening here is happening. I wonder this now, but back then I was only tumbling into the darkness. The shadow was gluey and the water didn't intervene at all. The black corridor my eyelids closed onto was also narrow and gluey, blended with blue dots. Pustules that I felt were eating my eyes. I'm trying to remember the story as it happened. And so I went with the darkness and the shadow into my death. I woke up, but Hassan was slapping me on my face and shouting like the men had shouted before. And this is what made me certain that I was dying. Wake up! Wake up! Don't go to sleep! I felt his hands around my hand. His fingers. Imagine. I felt his fingers. And they were swooping down onto my face. And then his fingers took hold of mine and rubbed them. The men around him scolded him and demanded that he get back and respect the horma of the women. A faraway voice said, These are women! Get away from there! Cover your eyes! And Hassan was shouting at them, They're dead! Then he slapped me again. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.